welcome back, Dr. Sarah Court, to The Body Nerd Show. So stoked to have you here with us again, but also always curious, what are you getting nerdy about right now? Uh, thank you for having me. And you always ask this question and I'm always like, what am I getting nerdy about? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, it always varies a little bit. Uh, and a lot of the time it's got to do with whatever patients I'm seeing in that, the, you know, whenever, when we're recording. Um, and just really kind of starting to like connect the dots. And it sounds sort of pretty basic because it's what we do anyway, but really starting to sort of connect more dots of, of body parts influencing each other and, you know, seeing certain things show up and then something else like always shows up mm. with that, things like that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, mm -hmm. um, I know that's kind of a vague answer, but, but really starting to collect evidence, I guess, of more mm -hmm. and more things that I see are like, Oh, if this person has that, I'm going to ask them about A, B, C, D, E as well, because most likely all those things are also present. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm nerding out on now, right now. I was, thought you were going to say like Love Island or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would, except I finished it. <laughs> oh my gosh, every episode? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I think I, I think I watch every, I mean, if you don't know the show, the reason why she said every episode is most seasons have, I believe, about 50 one hour episodes. <laughs> it's a lot of television. Um, it's very good for leaving the room and coming back and not missing anything because the plot thing. moves very slowly. So it's, it's, yeah, it's good background noise. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But what you're talking about too with your patients is something I think that people think or forget about the body, right? Mm -hmm. We think like, oh, it's just like a robot or a machine. And if I put this input in, then this will happen like as the output when really it is, you know, dynamic and as, caretakers of bodies, whether we're outside the body we're taking care of or inside the body, um, that detective nature of it, of like really being a body detective to kind of like follow the clues like you're talking about is so important. Yeah, definitely. And, and it, more and more, I think people are starting to understand and practitioners are really starting to understand and put into their practice, understanding that like your hip could be impacting the other side of your body neck or your ankle on the right could be why you have left shoulder pain or something like that. Like stepping back and really looking at the bigger picture and, and not dismissing it as like, Oh, well they have an ankle injury, but that's completely unrelated to their, you know, rotator cuff or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and really starting to, to treat the whole person and see the person right. as, a, as a whole thing. Yeah. Which is completely like radical because that's not what, at least here in the States, our medical system is set up to take care of. Right. No. You know, we got the podiatrist and the dentist and the rotator cuff specialist, orthopedic surgeon who doesn't talk to the intern. You know, it's just mm -hmm. like all of these specialists. Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely right. And and I think we talked about this a little bit either last time or before about how it's all insurance based as well, mm -hmm. right? Because if I if you come to me with neck pain and I start working on your ankle, your insurance probably isn't going to pay for it. It's oh nuts. It's nuts. It's nuts. But you know. <sighs> We do what we can. Yeah. America. <laughs> Viva America. Ay, ay, ay. Well, um, on a lighter note. Yes. Uh, so today we <laughs> wanted to talk about um, more of these fitness myths, right? There's, yeah. we put out an ask on social media uh, for the things that you have heard of that are nonsense, but we don't know, like until we know better, we can't do better. And so for those of you who don't have, you know, professional backgrounds in fitness or are not doctors of physical therapy, it's harder to be like, well, is this real or is it not real? So our goal today is to help give some, shine a light and give some clarity on just a few things with big words that I learned to spell today. But first, <laughs> let us start with this one. So Doug sent in a message and he said, I, uh, hi, I hear deadlifts are bad for low back pain, but I found that they help my pain. Am I the exception or is it true? Are deadlifts bad for your lower back? So I actually, I love this too, because I remember when I first started doing, um, like CrossFit and weightlifting, um, and lifting poorly and my back hurt like crazy. So that version of me would have been like, yes, deadlifts are bad for your back. But what do you think about this one, Sarah? Well, you know, this, this comes sort of under the category of like, you know, and you see this a lot in, in sort of social media and things like that, where this kind of blanket statement of X movement 
is bad for X or Y part of your body, right? So if you have this, never do this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing is like, it's just, it's much easier to say something like that on social media because it's a very kind of clear message. It's much more difficult to, to be more accurate because Mm -hmm. the accurate version is nuanced and it's (laughs) different person to person. And the reality is, and and people always hate when I say like, it depends Mm -hmm. because it sounds like it's a cop out, but it actually is the most, uh, it's the most accurate thing to say is that it depends, you know, low back pain can have a variety of sources. And so to, to say that one thing is always bad for low back pain is also like mischaracterizing low back pain. You know, you can have low back pain because your muscles are really like, you know, spasming or aggressively tight. You could have low back pain because of, you know, uh, a disc that's pressing on a nerve. You could have low back pain because of a, like a stenosis. There's so many different ways. And so, uh, you know, and in some cases, strengthening your back is actually completely appropriate. So, you know, to, to just sort of say something like deadlifting is bad for your low back is just, you know, patently untrue, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reality is it's, it's much more of a like, well, let's look at you and let's look at, first of all, how are your mechanics? Like, or how are you, how are you doing this deadlift? Yeah. Um, are you doing it in a way that's excessively straining your back? Perhaps that's part of why it's, it's you know, not working for you. Um, or is this, are you someone where actually going into that kind of more of an extension position for your spine is a great idea and you actually need to make your back stronger. There's plenty of people who need that. So, uh, I think we can say that is a complete myth to say that <laughs> deadlifts are bad for low back pain <laughs> because mm-hmm. for some people it's, it's probably exactly what they need, but not everybody, mm-hmm. not everybody. Yeah. And that's, that's why. I think too, so. though, you, you touched upon it of having better mechanics and yeah. how that can help. Uh, because I see so often it's like, Oh, here's this fancy new exercise or do this new thing or do this or do that, do this. But it's like, okay, but like, how are we actually moving? And do we know how to move in a way that's not going to, uh, like exacerbate anything or also is like less mechanically efficient. It's like, yes, we are not robots, but physics does apply. And in the body, right. It's biomechanics and there are ways in which you can move that are easier for all the systems and easier to move. And the hip hinge, which is essentially, you know, what a deadlift is. um, A lot of people, myself included, don't know how to hip hinge. That was something that I had to learn and practice to then be able to deadlift and also to then not be able to, or to not have to worry about low back pain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people that I work with, like learning the hip hinge without also sort of going into spinal flexion at the same time is, is very challenging. People don't automatically have really good proprioception, right? They can't necessarily tell where they are in space. Um, and so that's a big part of it as well. Like actually learning how to just move from the hips and just go into Mm -hmm. hip flexion versus hip flexion. And then after a certain amount of time, now I'm rounding my back, I'm going to spinal flexion, you know, and and everything kind of Mm -hmm. falls apart. And you know, there's all kinds of reasons why that's, why that happens, uh, for people. A lot of the reason I see it is because the, um, there's a a limit in how far the person can hip hinge before their hamstrings are just like, no, but they keep (laughs) want to keep moving. Right. Because what they're understanding is that they've got to get their body lower because that's what a deadlift looks like or something. Right. So that's like, get there, however you get there. So yeah, the mechanics of it and, and really understanding how to, you know, move your body, um, sort of piece by piece, right? It's, it's the, can I isolate these different movements before I put them back together? You know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. as opposed to, oh, I saw a deadlift. Okay. Now I'm just going to go do it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to pick up this 40 pound kettlebell and just go for it. Right. And that's probably going to end poorly. Maybe not, but, but it's possible. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe well, not and it's never, it's never just one deadlift. Right. right? Exactly. It's always like three sets of 30 or like yeah. something insane. And sure. then you're like, Oh my God, my back exploded. It's yeah. like, and with, with any movement, I feel like you should be able to do it without weight first. A hundred percent. And then add the weight. And especially if it's a new movement to you, like you should train it without weight first. That's my feeling because if I, if I don't understand how to do the movement 
with just my own body weight, I don't think you really have any business adding weight to it mm -hmm. until you do. Mm -hmm. um, some people may disagree with me, but that's, that's my opinion. I'm, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, we're saying, okay, deadlifts, if you know, if your mechanics are there, probably totally fine. Um, but I think what also falls under this is, you know, bending over with a totally rounded back, mm -hmm. which, um, uh, I mean, it does, it feels good to stretch your back sure. that, that way, you know? Um, and then there also is, um, cause we've done this together. I can't think of what the technical term is where you do like a slow forward fold mm -hmm. with weight. Yeah. So it's like loaded spinal flexion, yeah. which like the version of me 10 years ago would be like, Oh my God, your back's going to explode. Right. Uh, which it's like, just why are you doing the movement? Like, what is the goal? Yeah. And like, do you know how to move well right. and then go from there? And, you know, in no way am I saying that spinal flexion is a bad movement or that you shouldn't load spinal flexion. But again, like, you know, before doing that movement, I don't, I don't know what it's called either, but like, it's sort of like a spinal roll down where it's sort mm -hmm. of eccentrically controlling it with your back muscles. Um, but like I teach people how to do that up against a wall first without a weight mm -hmm. so that they can actually mm -hmm. feel that kind of segmental movement through their spine, you know, and, mm -hmm. um, and then, and then make it harder, right. Then add weight to mm -hmm. it. Then, but yeah, it just, it just depends. And again, for some people, that movement is a great idea. And for other people, perhaps not, right. Perhaps they need to be doing a deadlift <laughs> with no mm -hmm. spinal flexion. Right. So mm -hmm. it's just this kind of idea of like, you know, there's no, there's no bad movements, you know, um, it just depends if it's sort of the right choice for you and for your body at that moment in time. Mm-hmm. I just tried to look it up to you. I have no idea what it's called, but if you've ever done it, you know, you're like yelling at your phone right now. Yes. Like, oh, it's called a, da, da, da. Yeah. just remind us. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. Like there are no bad movements. And I also feel like you should be prepared for the weird stuff. Yes. Right. For stepping off a curb and like your body going all wonky. Like if you never practice doing weird things, if everything is like very robotic, then that's all you're ready for. Right. So how are you? Um, like ready for real life is really, yeah. I think what it comes down to. Yeah. And we, we can get kind of like over concerned about like, you know, exact right position for like your squat or, or, or whatever. Um, and like, Oh, your knees can never go in or, or anything like that. And then, you know, take a look at some people playing basketball and you'll see their knees and their ankle, everything going all over the place. Right. And they're fine. Mm -hmm. So it's all circumstantial. It's all based on like, how much is your body, like you said, prepared to do all kinds of different movement. It's, and, and it is important to sort of train in 3D, right? Not just train like forwards and backwards, or maybe, you know, I do my forwards and backwards and then I do my like sideways monster walks or whatever, and that's <laughs> it, right? And at no point do I ever turn my feet in or turn my feet out or one leg is in front of the other, you know, like all that kind of variety that we see in our daily lives. Um, showing up, but that we don't ever like train for when we go and train. Yeah. So, yeah. Which is why I love my BOSU. I was on it this morning <laughs> too. Cause it's like wobbly, which if you're not practiced on uneven surfaces, like, yeah, most of the world is paved, but it may not always, what about, it's like those stupid seed pods, you know, with those spiky things are all over oh, LA. Yes. And then you step on one of those, your whole mm -hmm. ankle is just like Bleh! off of it. Like you have to be prepared for that. And the yeah. only way to prepare that is stepping on uneven surfaces. <laughs> so yes, there is no one movement that is good or bad for this other movement. You should just move well. That's right. In lots of ways. That's right. Myth and get help. I mean, busted. you know, that's the other thing is like, you know, if you're not sure, just there's, get someone to help you, you know, hire a trainer, go to PT. I mean, I have plenty of people I work with that are we're just sort of doing, you know, what would you call wellness or maintenance where they just want to train with a set of eyes on. Them. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe they had some sort of more serious injury, but they're not, they've healed from that, but they still like to have, you know, a professional watching them doing what they're doing and helping them with it. So, you know, that's, that's always, if it's, if it's affordable and, and, you know, there's, there's also, there are a lot of great resources on the internet. It's not like everything is like telling lies, but, <laughs> but you just sort of have to get a little more sophisticated in the way that you search out what you search out for. Right. It's like, if you mm -hmm. look for medical advice on Dr. Google, you know, everything ends in worst case scenario, but if, you, <laughs> if you're able to kind of 
finesse a little bit and, and actually kind of pick out, okay, well, what is actually accurate and what is probably not, you know? The internet is so great at terrible scenarios. Like even with my dog, she got a scratch from a cat in her eye and then it was like, she's going to lose her eye. That was what the internet said. That's the only option. I was just like, wait, 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 how did we end up here? So you're like, is there a step before losing the eye? I would like no, to just, just that's don't it. Google it. Don't yeah. Google it. Oh no. No. Yeah. And uh, it didn't teach her her lesson. She went back for her seconds and thirds. Oh. Well, that's, cat. that's, that's her own fault then. That's her own fault. Dogs these days. All right. So <laughs> that myth has been busted. Um, let's talk about this. So um, I don't know who sent you this message, but you texted me. We need to add this to this list. Uh, the chiropractor put my vertebra back in place. Can it go out mm. in the first place? Yeah. Which I think there's a lot of stuff that falls into this. Like, mm -hmm. um, oh, I slipped a disc mm -hmm. um, or um, I threw like, my back out. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. There's all these like parts flying everywhere, yes. according to some people. Yes. Catastrophizing language around your body or around, and especially around the spine. Um, you know, this idea, well, so I'll sort of try to address each of them. This idea of like a slipped disc, it's, it's language that's been used to describe, you know, like a herniated disc, essentially. But you're, the disc is not going anywhere. It is, it is very firmly attached to everything above and below it. So this idea, like it's not slipping, right? It's not like falling mm -hmm. out of your back. But if that's how it's described to you, that's kind of terrifying. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, if some, if I didn't know better and someone said, you know, you've got a slip disc, I'm like, oh my God, I shouldn't move at all. Cause what mm -hmm. if it keeps slipping, you know, like how yeah. far is it going to go? How far is it going to fall out? Right. So <laughs> Just starting to understand that like that that's meaningless and, and completely untrue. Um, and then when people say like, oh, I threw my back out, I hear that quite a bit from people. And I I should start actually asking when people tell me this, like, what do you think that means? You know, what, mm -hmm. what does that mean to you? Um, because usually what people are talking about in that situation is really just a huge spasm like a mm -hmm. muscular spasm in the low back. I've had it happen to me where Same. I was sitting and I turned and then reached down for something to the side of me. And all of a sudden my back, my lower back just kind of seized. And I basically <laughs> like slow motion crumpled to the floor and kind of <laughs> laid on the ground for about half an hour. And I was like, huh, oh, no. okay, do I, I guess I live here now. I don't, can I get up? I don't know. <laughs> But, um, your dog's looking at her face. She's like, she's like are uh, you okay? Uh, are you okay? Do I, when do I start eating you? How long do I have to wait? <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but um, you know, the reason that, that might happen is it's kind of, um, well, depending. It can be kind of an overreaction. You know, your brain is sensing where your spine is. And probably you've put your spine into a position that, according to your brain, uh, is is potentially you know injurious dangerous is maybe yeah. a strong word but like it's potentially gonna gonna be painful or problematic and so your brain says to those muscles you know what S just stop this idiot don't let them move any more yeah. in this direction because this i don't think this is going well right or like this is going to end badly and so in particular if you've had back pain before or if you've had any other kind of like injury to your low back or you know, chronic something happening, um, you know, your brain's kind of already primed to think, oh God, mm -hmm. something's going to happen. Right. Yeah. And, and that's, that's what it does. It's usually with these kind of compound movements where it's like, I bent over and I twisted or I turned to the side that's, and yep, I reached back. I did it. Right. Mm -hmm. where it's, it's, it's usually, it's not usually just like I, well, it can be, but, but it's usually sort of like a combination of things where your brain is just kind of like, ah, ah. and so it, it just like, just wants to arrest any more movement from happening. And, yeah. um, you know, it's legitimately painful and can go on. I mean, for people that it happens to it can go on for like, you know, in worst case situations like weeks, you know, it, but, mm -hmm. but it, it's not, um, you didn't throw it out. Like it's not in the garbage, right? <laughs> like the language around it is, is, is misleading because it doesn't actually tell you anything about what's actually happening. You know? Yeah, and or even so, that it's like out of place. That like there's something in the wrong place. You know, yeah. you mean like with a chiropractor? 
both that like yeah. I threw my back out. Okay, okay, so it's you know not in the right place right, anymore. Right. So do I just like wait for it to decide to come back? How does to it the come right back place? into place? Yes. Yeah. 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 And and uh, yeah. Under I think understanding that oh my dog's probably gonna bark in a second because there's some dogs running around outside. Um, <laughs> just understanding that like it's muscular. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a reaction, right? It's kind of a, a an overreaction or response to your, your body, like the possibility of something actually happening and it will eventually resolve. And you may need to just sort of be mindful of the ways that you move or, or, cause it's probably not going to let you like stretch it out immediately. You know, it's sort of that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like you kind of have to, it's the scared animal approach, right? Or you just kind of like sit down next to oh her like, gosh. Hey, what's happening? Yeah. You know, like, yes. don't, don't look it directly in the eye, you know, don't move too fast. Don't move too fast. <laughs> don't ask too much. Just kind of sit there quietly. So, you know, it, it's, it's always treatable and it always resolves. But I think, um, because it tends to kind of feel like it came out of nowhere or it's like, yeah. I just moved and then it happened. I think it's then very easy for people to get into a place of like, Oh God, one wrong move. And I'm going to throw my back out. Right. Yeah. And then you, you start to get in a mindset of, well, I should never move because if I move, mm -hmm. I'm going to throw my back out. Right. So, so then you start to lose any sort of pliability and natural mobility and suppleness that your spine should have, you know, and, and be able to do. And then oftentimes that's actually the problem. Like I'll have mm -hmm. people come into the clinic and they're, their back pain is not from, you know, their disc herniation. Their back pain is because they are afraid to move out of extension in their lumbar spine. And that's, that's a, I've seen people where it's like, let I me mean, reteach you a little bit and see like, okay, if you go into this shape a little bit yeah. uh, and it's actually like resolved their pain for them because it's, again, it's not the, it's not the thing they think it is. It's their body's response to that thing a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the thing with the chiropractor, you know, I mean, chiropractors kind of get thrown under the bus quite a bit. <laughs> I know. Um, I love my chiropractor. You know, I do too. I have a, I have a one rib that is a little extra mobile and every now and then it kind of like slightly shifts to, you know, it's probably if we had to like get really scientific about it, like a millimeter off of where it's supposed to be, but I feel it changes it. everything. I feel it. Changes it. Everything. And then I yeah. go to my chiropractor and he does his magic and it's better. Right. Yeah. Um, but I've done that twice total in the past, maybe two, three years. Yeah. I think what happens sometimes, or, or I'll hear people say like, well, I have to go to the chiropractor every week because he has to put my spine, he or she has to put my spine back into place. So I have to keep getting adjusted over and over again. And, you know, Anybody who has to go to any kind of practitioner or otherwise they're, they're not functional, you, you know, that's, you want to sort of take a look at that because something, mm -hmm. you know, it, you know, the, the best case scenario, what, what should happen, you know, if I see a patient, eventually they should outgrow me, you know, mm -hmm. they should, they should get better and leave, you know, yeah. not because I don't like them, but because they're better, right? That's the whole, I should make myself um, useless, right? I should no yeah, longer be of yeah. any use to them. Any situation where, and, and obviously that's not the case if it's like, I have people I'm doing, you know, we're not trying to fix things anymore. We're just working right. out. But, yeah. but if it's like, oh, if I don't keep going to this practitioner, then my body is in the wrong place or, you know, I can't function. The, the biggest part of that that I think you want to take a look at is like, well, clearly whatever you're doing is not sticking. Or it's mm -hmm. not impacting what you think needs to be impacted if you have to go every single week, right? Or every two weeks or, or whatever. Um, and, you know, sort of bigger picture, we always, I always think about it like active and passive, right? It's something like a chiropractor is a passive treatment. It's happening to you. Right. The active part is your body learning how to maintain whatever got adjusted, right? Um, and if your body doesn't learn how to do that, you're going to keep doing your same movement patterns, right? And so there's no, there's no learning happening on your part and you become dependent on somebody else to like keep fixing you every week. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, this idea that like I need the chiropractor to like put my spine back, 
you know, or, or anything like I need, you know, I have to, you know, get my upper traps massaged every week because they're so tight. I'm like, well, okay, then maybe fine. Cause maybe you just really like massage or whatever. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, there's something in your behavior that's making that happen. Because right. the second you get up off the massage table, you're going into your same pattern of movement. Right. And maybe it doesn't right. hurt that day, but within a week it hurts enough that you want to massage again. Right. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, just it's incorrect i think to think that like i constantly need someone to passively fix me a lot of people get into that cycle um and instead we want to start to think about like okay maybe i do need that initially and certainly with some of those things like it does take more than one repetition Mm -hmm. of it i had a, a vertebra in my neck that actually got rotated uh because of doing a shoulder stand for 10 minutes Oh, every nice. day, every day. Oh goodness! Oh for goodness! Whatever it was during my yoga teacher training, that's what everyone had to do. You had to do a five-minute headstand, and you had to do a ten-minute shoulder stand every single day for a month or something. And after the teacher training, I was walking down the street. I turned my head, and I get this shooting pain up the side of my neck. Oh my gosh! Um, you know, because the, all of those, you know, and it's you know, I agreed to do it. I'm not blaming it's anybody. Perspective, you know. <laughs> My neck was like, I will save you. It's we like, cannot move. Please do not do that again. Do you know how many times you've done a shoulder stand in the past month? Um, so when I was working with a chiropractor for that, <laughs> it oh, took God. a few times because it was like, I had yeah. really kind of jacked it up, but I'm not still getting that worked on. You know, there comes yeah. a time when it's like, okay, now it's fixed. And I have my little exercises that I did and, and we got it better. So yeah, I mean, I think, I think a big piece of it is, um, you know, taking responsibility for your own body and, and working with the person that you're working with, as opposed to expecting them to kind of just fix it for you. Yeah. Um, Although I feel like that's hard when you don't know about the body. A hundred percent. You know? Absolutely. Cause I can't fix my car. So if something goes wrong right. with my car, I have to bring it to the mechanic and be like, ah, can you fix it? <laughs> right. I don't So it just started leaking something. I have no idea. Right. Um, maybe if I was, if I was more mechanically minded, I would go on YouTube and learn about things saying, and, <laughs> you go on YouTube, right? and then you would and like, know. You know, and realize like, Oh, this whole thing only actually costs $25, but they're charging me $600, you know, or whatever. But that's, that's, that's an thing. So, but, <laughs> but yeah, when it comes to our bodies, a lot of the time we have that kind of same mindset where it's like, Oh, something yeah. went wrong. I have no idea where it, what it was. I need to go to a specialist and they're yeah. going to fix it. And then fingers crossed, it never happens again. You know. Yeah. Well, and I think too the like fitness wants to sell you in the fitness industry this like super sexy idea of like oh this massage gun will fix you or this new thing is going to yes. fix you and really it comes down to doing the boring things like moving better, having better posture mm-hmm. and making sure that your fundamentals are great. And it's like the same with your car too. Are your wheels aligned so that your tires wear evenly and do you have oil in your car? You know, like yeah. that that is the same between machines and us. Yes. But also like to your point, if someone sets you up where you will have to be dependent on them for ever, like that's a huge red flag of that person, but also that modality. Like, why do I have to do that thing the same way forever and ever? Yeah. You know, like I roll my traps out, but not every day because I don't need it mm-hmm. every day. And that's even from someone who like loves rolling on therapy balls. Like you don't have to do the same thing every single day. Right. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it, it can happen anywhere. I mean, it can happen with physical therapists as well, where it's like, mm-hmm. oh no, you have to see me every single week because otherwise, you know, and, and using language that's sort of fear mongering for people where they're like, oh, you know, my PT said, or my, my chiropractor said, or my acupuncturist said, like, I'm very fragile or like, I'm very yeah. something, you know? And so I can't do anything on my own. Like there, there's definitely scenarios where, where stuff like that happens. And, um, I just try not to ever be that practitioner. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, I think it's a combination too of taking responsibility for your body, but also as the practitioners of like giving power back to people. Yes. By way of education. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and and you know it's it's really important and i think you know i can't speak to to other clinicians but certainly for me you know it, it we were encouraged to educate patients in pt school but it was also kind of like but don't make it too hard for them you know right. it was kind of like they're not going to totally get it mm-hmm. and I don't like that either because it's like, you know, I, I should be able to, no, I'm not going to use all my super medical language and my like anatomical terms. Of course not. I'm speaking a different, you're, there's no way you're going to understand that because I'm speaking a totally different language, but it's on mm-hmm. me to be able to translate that and make it make sense to you, you know, where it's like, oh, your neck is hurting because you're not stabilizing in your pelvis. And then every time you walk, it's actually like shaking your head around. Like that's a very easy way to explain something. To, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, sure. I think it should be part of everybody's toolkit, whether you're a clinician, even if you're if you're a trainer, like anyone who's working with people with their bodies, you should be able to explain to them what you're doing with them and why, mm-hmm. you know, so that they understand. Which is again red flag if they won't tell you. Yes, or red if flag. they can't. If they can't, ah, yeah, right? you know, yeah. maybe they're doing it because this is the one routine that they know how to teach. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> or like mm-hmm. everybody gets, you know, bridges and clams. I love to make fun of uh, I actually love a bridge myself. I, I love to make fun of bridges and clams, but <laughs> Yeah, it's so true too. Like I mean I shit on clamshells all the time. But then also <laughs> like I do love me a good bridge. Yeah. It's just know. it works. You know, okay. that hip extension, you get your glutes firing yeah. after you've been sitting on them. Yep. They Can't hate it. They need Can't it. hate it. Mm-mm. Well, <laughs> There are so many, I mean, even on my list right now of fitness myths that we could debunk. Um, but I want to keep it, let's just end here today so that we have more to continue to talk about because yeah, this is always so fun to have your genius and your wisdom and also like your calm energy. I feel like (laughs) I'm a chihuahua. all over the place. Um, I also, if you are listening to this episode, I put it up on YouTube on uh, my AE Wellness channel also because then you get to see Sarah's dog Pearl, who is like, "Oh, are you talking about me? I think I should come over right now." So you heard her a little bit, but you also get to see her. So, any last words of wisdom? Oh God, parting advice for like, what's like one thing someone can do right now to? be able to like better decipher, like, is this bullshit or not? (laughs) Uh, anytime you see something that's talking in absolutes, like Mm -hmm. these are the only stretches you need for your hamstrings or, you know, these five tips will banish your back pain forever. Anything like that, just run the opposite direction because it's a marketing ploy. It's not accurate. You are unique. Your body's needs are unique. There is no one set routine of movements that work on everybody. And Mm -hmm. it's just a way to kind of, it's clickbait, right? It's a way to get you to click through and then buy whatever new toy that they've invented. heading over to change my workshop titles right now. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, ooh, I'm going to call this workshop. No, I totally, yeah. yeah. I have banished back man. I've talked, but you know what? In my defense, it's a doorway. And so I think if people are saying, this is it, this is the only way right. versus like, come step through the wardrobe exactly. with me into Narnia yeah. and look at this whole other world mm-hmm. on the other side, totally. like there's a difference. Versus like, you only need to do this one thing and you'll feel great for life. You know, that kind yeah. of stuff is just like, I always, I always laugh when I'm like scrolling and I see something like that come up. I'm like, <laughs> and then I keep going. <laughs> So yeah, that would be my advice. Them. Whenever you whenever you see something like that, don't don't fall for it. It's a myth. Just keep going. It's Just a myth. walk the other way. That's right. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. Okay, so now we are equipped. We have another tool in our basket or our, our toolkit of yes. like no absolute language. Um, but absolutely, where can people come and hang out with you? <laughs> uh, thank on you. The internet. I am mostly on Instagram. I'll dip a toe into Facebook, but I'm not really consistently there. So it's Sarah Court DPT uh, on Instagram, and then my website is the same thing, Sarah Court DPT dot com. And awesome. I teach some public workshops, not as much, um, but I, I do a lot of private work as well and either mm-hmm. online with people or in person. So mm-hmm. that's where you can find me. Uh, or if you're in the LA area and you want to come into the clinic, I work at a clinic called Align Physical Therapy and Chiropractic, which is in Larchmont, which is also good because then you can afterwards go to Salt and Straw and get really delicious, Ooh, ice cream. crazily overpriced, you know, ice cream. 
or like go get them tiger and you get a nice like fancy coffee for eight dollars or whatever like all kinds oh. of good so those are good food options near where i work I'm very hungry right now. That does sound good. do they have uh the last time I saw a Go Get Him Tiger, there was a pizza place there too. Is it the same or is Go Get Him Tiger just coffee? This is only uh, a LA eater <laughs> podcast. Go Get Him Tiger is, it's like coffee and sort of baked goods and maybe like a salad. I'm not sure if there's like full on pizza. This was, I think this was more of a marketplace as I'm now uh, remembering. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. But yes, I will say too that uh, one of the silver linings of COVID has been online offerings are available. So there are people like you and myself who are online so that you don't have to get in a car, you don't have to live in the same city, you can have your questions answered and even your body looked at as you're moving from someone who's not necessarily in the same room as you. That's right. That's right. So. Go check it out. Um, also, keep sending us your fitness myths that you want debunked because we are keeping a running tally of all of these. Um, and Sarah's going to be back. We're going to talk more um, about how to spot the red flags and then when to walk the other way. So <laughs> stay tuned for that. And thank you so much, Sarah, for being thank here today. You. It's been awesome. Tell Pearl I say thank you as well. I will. Um, and until next time. Thank you. What do you want to see more of? comment below and let me know. Also make sure you give this video a thumbs up so that more people can find it and definitely make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you'll get notified every time I put out a new video.